Hey everyone, Alex Crone here from the North Center for Natural History, UCSC's very own Natural History Museum. I'm here to take you on a reptile and amphibian tour of Younger Lagoon. Younger Lagoon is a pretty cool place for reptiles and amphibians because it's uh, a wetland area right on the coast that has been protected for a pretty long time and even though it is small, it is pretty mighty in reptile and amphibian diversity. And so we're going to go around today, we're going to um, flip a bunch of cover boards that Younger Lagoon has out and we're going to see what we can find. So cover boards like this one uh, are really good for finding reptiles and amphibians because they um, sit out in the sun and kind of absorb heat and uh, reptiles and amphibians will go under and try to uh, absorb that heat without being exposed to predators. And so if you are looking to find reptiles and amphibians or to attract them to an area, putting out cover boards or, or cover in general uh, can be a really good way to do that. So yesterday we had some weird weather for May. Uh, it was rainy and it was cold and it was just not very reptile friendly. Um, but today, as you can kind of see, it's it's a little bit nicer. It's cloudy, it's uh, chilly-ish. It's like 50, 55 right now. Um, but it's significantly warmer than yesterday. So that might be a good thing for finding some uh, herps, as they're called, reptiles and amphibians, shortened to herps. Um, that might be a good thing because hopefully the cold weather, so right now everyone's up and awake, everyone's out of winter brumation or hibernation, depending on who you are. Um, and they're, they're out cruising around, probably the low pressure system moved in, uh, reptiles and amphibians can usually feel those pressure changes, and that would cause them to go and seek cover because a big storm is coming. Um, and so hopefully that cold weather drove them into these cover boards where they, they sought shelter and uh, we will find a ton of stuff just waiting for us um, as they hide out under the cover boards and wait for it to get warm enough for them their bodies to warm up because remember they are ectothermic which means they absorb and maintain they absorb heat from the environment and maintain their body temperatures based on the temperatures of the environment. Um, that's key, probably should have mentioned that first. So, let's go see what we can find. First flip of the day, let's see. Holy moly. Come on, come on. Well, we did it, we can go home happy. This, folks, is a rubber boa. These are pretty much the coolest snake you can find at Younger Lagoon. Um, they're, they're just darn incredible. So you can tell that they are rubber boas because they're adorable. No, just kidding. Um, so if you can see, I don't know, can we get this to focus? Okay, that's about my focal distance right there. Um, they have this really smooth gray skin. Um, it doesn't have any keels in it. So it's really smooth and, and silky. Um, they have a tail that looks um, kind of like their, their head which is kind of non-distinct, no um, real neck or anything there. Um, they have really small eyes, as you can see, which makes them more adorable. And these, they're, they're boa relatives. They're super, super cool. Oh, it's a male, oh my gosh. Um, so uh, the, this is the California boa constrictor right here. One of, one, two, three species of boas that we have in California. And these are really cool, really cool, hardy animals. You can see them out at when it's like 50 degrees out. They live for a really long time. They're nest raiders, so they'll go in and um, just like go into a mouse nest and eat all the little mouse pups, go into a bird's nest, eat all the birds. You see this, this little black dot right there? Um, that's called a pelvic spur. They're only on, um, uh, on males. And so boas um, in, in the world of snakes are uh, pretty basal, pretty uh, m more similar to what we think like the first snakes, derived snakes, we'll say that. So these are, are a basal lineage of snake um, and they actually still have a pelvic girdle. They still have remnants of when um, snakes, which are technically evolved from lizards, uh, had legs. And it is awesome. Um, and so those little spurs there are only found on males 
and they are um, they're thought to be like sense organs uh, when males are mating um, but they're actually derived from the hips that are still present floating little hip bones in this ancient boa constrictor that lives on the coast of California and raids little birds nests um, this one is not particularly banged up you can see it's got a little scar on its head there um, you sometimes these uh, snakes will have all sorts of crazy gnarly scars from encounters with mama birds or mama rats when they were um, feeding. You can They often use this tail as a distraction. They'll like wave it up and be like, look, it's my head, it's my head, attack there, and um, save their important bits. Amazing little creature. I'm going to put it back where we found it. So we're now here in the terrace lands. We're outside of the lagoon. The lagoon was not as productive as I had hoped. Um, and so this area of the of the terrace, as you probably know, used to be a Brussels sprouts field, and it's in the process of being restored back to its coastal prairie. But um, during the resurvey, we found that um, reptile and amphibian diversity tends to be a little bit lower here. Um, the boards tend to be infested with um, uh, Argentina ants, uh, which snakes don't usually like. Um, but we'll see what we find. Ho ho! Nice! Wow, so this is right next to a huge colony of uh, Argentine ants, but um, we found probably the most common snake on uh, at Younger Lagoon. This is the Western Terrestrial Garter Snake, Hemnophis elegans terrestris, um, and so it, it's pretty cool. Back where I grew up, in New Jersey, we had um, one species of garter snake. Here, just at Younger Lagoon, you have potentially three, but more likely two um, species. In, in Santa Cruz County, definitely three species. Um, so this is Thamnophis elegans. You can tell if you're a bit of a herp nerd um, because it has, oh, he's probably not gonna be very cooperative, six scales above the upper lip that you can see, and the two chin shields um, are of different length. I'm not gonna hold him like that because he doesn't like it. Um, another way that you can tell is you can see those red dots along the side. Um, the other species probably won't have that. Um, so these are garter snakes. They're found kind of throughout the reserve. Uh, they're pretty generalist. They really like um, tadpoles and um, frog larvae, but they'll eat worms, they'll eat insects, they'll eat small mice, they'll eat kind of whatever they can fit their mouths around. Um, this is a cool one. It luckily hasn't pooped or peed on me, um, and so it's it's very friendly. Um, and I am just surprised, like, oh my gosh, here, come check this out. This board is just crawling in ants, and this snake seemed to be doing just fine. Um, so that is pretty cool and, and pretty surprising. Normally you associate garter snakes with water. Um, this one is not an obligate, not always hanging out around water. Um, Although some of the other species really do. Cool. All right, that's one more snake. We'll put them back. And um, I don't know if it'll go back under with all these swarming ants, but we'll see. Um, nope, there it goes on top of the board. And we will let it um, hang back and, and find a good place. Out here on the terrace, let's see what we can get. Whoa. Oh man, again, crawling with ants. But still, check out this beauty. It's like nearly green or yellow. Oh my gosh, this is an alligator lizard. Um, you can tell it's got really long tail. In fact, they, they love grasslands such as this area here. They can be grassland swimmers with their tail, which is also prehensile, which is pretty cool. Um, and so you can see, whoop they'll put their uh, their legs back and they'll just swim through the grass. Um, there are two species of alligator lizard here in Santa Cruz, unlike most places on Earth. You can see that this, uh, this guy's eye is gold um, and that its underbelly scales are mostly black, but the black is mostly in the center of the scales. Um, so if you go to Southern California, you're gonna be gold and tan um, because of all the sun, so that's how you can remember golden eye southern alligator lizard. And we found hundreds and hundreds of uh, southern alligator lizards here at Younger Lagoon, but no northern alligator lizards. Unlike their northern alligator lizards, they're really uh, 
primed for, for hot weather. They go down all the way into Baja, California, whereas northern alligator lizards pretty much stop here, a little bit further south near the Pajaro River, and that's it. That's as far south as northern alligator lizards come. And northern alligator lizards are good for the cold. They skip the egg stage, and so they just have um, live, they have embryos without eggs inside of them. And then the mama can go around and she can thermoregulate as she needs, which is good in cold weather. She doesn't just lay her eggs in one area and hope that that is thermally stable for them to grow up um, or for them to hatch. She can thermoregulate with the eggs inside her body and then give birth to live young. That's good for cold weather. Southern alligator lizards, on the other hand, uh, give birth or lay eggs and that's better in warmer climates where you can be sure that this area is going to be warm enough to to raise your eggs and and have them hatch out normally um, that's pretty cool each other's closest relatives but one lays eggs one gives birth to live young I'm not gonna lie I flipped this earlier this is what I mean when it's like Christmas ready Oh my god. We got a fistful of snakes. Um, wow. Okay, so we got two uh, Demnophis elegans. What do we call them? Western terrestrial garter snakes. You can see they both have um, little bits of red on them. Um, don't know. One's definitely bigger than the other. It's really hard to sex snakes. You have to reach inside here for um, a... Uh, a hemipene. There was also a southern alligator lizard under there, which got away. Um, so you can see the terrace lands can still be productive. They both have blue eyes. Um, so these are what we call in the blue. So that happens when uh, snakes are getting ready to shed. They, they don't actually have eyelids. They have a protective scale over their eyeball. And that clouds up when it's separating from, when the top layer of skin is separating from the lower layers and they're getting ready to shed. That makes sense why they um, sought out this shelter, um, and they'll even cohabitate under that shelter because they um, want a safe place to, to slough their skin. That's why we've been finding lots of sheds under there. Um, it's nice and moist, it's nice and dark. You won't, you can see they, they can't get away from predators that easily um, when they're shedding, and so they'll, they'll go seek shelter. Um, wow, really cool. They even have little red spots underneath. Just awesome garter snakes. Um, there you go. Uh, Western terrestrial Thamnophis elegans terrestris. We'll let them go. All right, so we'll put them back underneath. Oh, gotcha. Um, oh, they're gone. They're like, no way am I hanging out there. Here's the southern alligator lizard again. Really beautiful. This one um, has lost its tail and it's regrowing. I was surprised to see that, that really long-tailed uh, individual before. They lose their tails if you look at them crooked. Um, and this one is, is a more typical looking one uh, with white, black, and uh, tan crossbars. Good looking. Um, so we'll put them back off to the side there. And I'll just show you. Um, well, you can see this is a pretty popular uh, cover board. Let's get this out of the way. Yeah. Um, this is a pretty popular cover board. There's a bunch of other um, sheds in here. Again, um, keeled scales and can you see that? Yeah, lines down the, the center of the scales. These are probably also garter snakes. Oh yeah, here's a big stripe going down the middle. Definitely a garter snake. Um, probably not those ones because they haven't shed yet, but other ones. So this is the popular board. High quality stuff. Another board, another day. It's actually the same day. There's a southern alligator lizard. Again, really pretty looking. Let it go off into the woods. Oh, cool. There's an albino cricket down there. Neat. You never know what you're gonna turn up. Good looking board. Not a lot of, um, of ants. Um, yeah, high quality. Oh, there's a little vole or mouse nest too. Perfect for gopher snakes.